broadcast and I thank God for Gail Miller who's producing our television broadcast. Uh, I'm here in her studio. We are not physically in the house of God because we're honoring the stay-at-home order and I believe that God is working and moving through that stay-at-home order. God is working his purpose. Um, so we're going to try again to go into the word of God. God does have a word for his people. Uh, greetings to uh, Berean Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you. Uh, I ask that you would pray as we work through this, this word that God has given for the people. Uh, and as I prayed about what to bring for the people, the Spirit of, of the Lord gave me a time to rise. Christians, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this uh, break, outbreak rather of this coronavirus, and this financial setback that our country is going through, God is calling the church of Jesus Christ to rise. Um, we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And the world should be looking to us, in or, uh, looking to us rather, in how we are to handle this crisis. Uh, God is calling the church of Jesus Christ to rise. Um, so as we work through this thought, time to rise, we're going to look at the early church and how the early church handled persecution and how the early church handled affliction. Uh, this is our model, and this is where God is calling us to be as a church. Uh, so as we work through this thought, a time to rise, let's look at uh, Acts chapter 5. And in Acts chapter 5, I'll start reading in verse 17. And in Acts chapter 5, Fear or reverence just fell on the church of Jesus Christ. There was an event that happened, and right after that event, fear or reverential fear fell on the church of Jesus Christ like never before. And right after the fear hit the church of Jesus Christ, then power fell on the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, people were healed. There were miracles. Uh, there were signs and wonders. Uh, because fear had fell on the church, people began to reverence the church of Jesus Christ, and then God began to work uh, through that church, through that ministry, and through that assembly. So, um, I'm going to begin reading in verse 17, and this is our model for what we're going through today concerning this crisis. People are dying, people are getting sick, uh, people are, have lost jobs, and as I said before, Christians, this is not a drill, but this is the real thing. The crisis that we're in is the real thing, and it behooves us, as the Hebrew writer said, to lay hold of the profession of our faith. It behooves us to lay hold of what we say we believe and live out our faith. This is a time for the church of Jesus Christ to rise. So, verse 17, then the high priest and all the associates, as they saw the miracles and as they saw the power fall on the church, fall on, uh, the church as they saw the miracles and the power fall on the church, they became jealous. The leaders at that time became jealous of the church of Jesus Christ. So, uh, they arrested, in verse 18, they arrested the apostles and put them into public jail. Verse 19, but during the night, an angel, the angel of the Lord, opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Look at verse 20. And, and said, go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life or this new life in Jesus Christ. So, when is the last time, church, that because of the power and the reverence that fell on our local assemblies, that the governors and the leaders 
And the presidents were jealous because of the power and the works of the church of Jesus Christ. This is our model. This is where we're supposed to be. And all this happened in the midst of affliction, in the midst of persecution. This church rose to the occasion. Uh, and power was demonstrated in this church, even to the point where the leaders in the land were jealous of the church of Jesus Christ. So, so they were put into prison, and because God was not finished, and because the kingdom of God will forcibly advance, and because the kingdom of God cannot be stopped, and because God knew that if he were to release them from their prisons, that they would be preaching the word of God, he sent an angel to release them from the prison and charge them to continue to preach the good news concerning the kingdom of God. So they were released from their prisons and they were instructed to preach the good news concerning the life or new life in Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 5, let's look at verse 25 as we work through the thought, a time to rise. Then... Someone came and said, look, the men that you put in jail are standing in the temple courts and they're teaching the people. Look at verse 27. And the apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin and to be questioned by the high priest. Verse 28. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Referring to the name of Jesus. And he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to make us guilty of the blood of this man. Verse 29, and Peter, Peter responded, and Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than man, or we must obey God rather than human beings. Verse 30, and God, our ancestors, raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. This is the type of reverence and boldness we ought to have as a, as a church in the midst of persecution. They, they put on their big, big boy clothes and they began to preach the gospel despite being forbidden to preach the gospel. They said we must obey God rather than mankind. And, and with boldness, they begin to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. This is where God is calling us to be as a church uh, in the face of the affliction and this corona crisis that we're going through, this financial setback. God is also calling us to follow the example of the early church. It's time, Christians, for us to rise as a church. Now, I'm going to read to you in Acts chapter 11. This assembly also was under persecution. I'm going to read to you in Acts chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, as we work through this thought, a time to rise. In verse 28, it says, as they were under uh, persecution, it says, And one of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine or severe lack would spread over the entire Roman world. Kind of remind us of what we're going through now. This happened during the reign of Claudius. Look at verse 29. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and the sisters living in Judea. Verse 30. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Paul. Not only Christians are we to rise concerning this corona outbreak when people are getting sick, people are dying. Not only in the face of that should the church be rising, but there's also a financial setback. People are losing their jobs. Jobs are shutting down with no warning, no time to get prepared financially. Um, so in the face of this, notice that the Christians, notice that the church rose to the occasion even in the financial crisis. Notice that the church didn't wait and look to the government. They didn't look to the president. But the church of Jesus Christ, in the face of financial setback, the church of Jesus Christ, they rose to the occasion in the midst of this severe famine or severe lack. It was the church that rose to the occasion and began to provide financial help 
and provision for those who are hurting and for those who are in need. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to rise in the face of what we're going through. And we are quick, I, I, and we are quick to quote, you know, uh, first, Second Corinthians chapter seven and verse fourteen. If my people who are called by my name, we're, we're quick to quote that passage, and, and that's good, Christians. That's good, uh, but but we often look over verse thirteen in Second Corinthians chapter seven. We go to fourteen, but we look over verse thirteen. In verse 13, God says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. God says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. And God goes on to say, or if I command the locusts to devour the land. God says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. And if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. So if God shuts up heaven, Christians, where there be no rain, and if God command locusts to devour the land, and if God send pestilence among his people, that will mess up the economy. So, so someone, someone said that we often run to God when we're in trouble or when our foundations are being shaken only to discover that it's God that's doing the shaking. It's God that's rattling our foundation. It's God that's shaking those things that we previously, previously trusted in or depended upon. So, so sometimes God is shaking our foundation. Sometimes God will mess up the economy in order to get the church of Jesus Christ to rise to the occasion. So, so God says, if I shut up heaven that there's no rain, if I command the locusts, and if I send pestilence among my people, he says, this is what you do in verse 14. He says, uh, <clears throat> if my people who are called by my name, he didn't say the government, he didn't say the president. He says, if I choose to mess up the economy, God says, and, and, and in the kingdom of God, there is no lack. God will never run out of resources. God is wealthy. The, uh, the earth is his, and the cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. Riches and wealth comes from God. But God says, if I decide to mess up the economy, he says, if my people, it begins with my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. If my people, God says, will humble themselves and pray. Now, now, with the churches being shut down, and, 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 and I believe that, that you know, I, I've quoted uh, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 20, where the prophet said that, that to go in your houses, close the doors behind you, and hide yourselves for a while while the Lord's wrath passes by. He says, hide yourselves for a while. So, so um, I just gave you the model of the early church, how they went out and they began to proclaim the gospel. And, and you might say, yeah, yeah, Rev, um, but the way things are now with this stay-at-home order and with this uh, social distancing, it's hard for us to model the early church during this pandemic that we're in, it's hard for us to get out and, and to take a corner for Jesus. But, but notice, notice when, when revival starts, notice that revival starts with the people of God and notice that God says if I mess up the economy, not only if there's a, 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 a disease or an outbreak of disease, but if I mess up the economy, God says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. With everything that's being shut down and with the social distancing and with the churches closing down, we can, I think God, he has us in the position where we can, first of all, humble ourselves. God is calling us to rise up as a church, but he's calling the church of Jesus Christ to humble ourselves. Revival starts with the church of God. Uh, the recovery of the, of the economy you, is in the book, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 14, revival concerning this economy. It doesn't start with the president or the governor, but it starts with the people of Almighty God. If we humble ourselves and, and, uh, and pray, 
While we are in our houses and we're with our families, it behooves us, people of God, to be go back to the basics, go back to the foundation of our faith, and begin to pray with our spouses, begin to pray with our children. We can humble ourselves, which means to depend upon God. Humility is just simply depending upon God, not your education, not your degrees, not your gifts, not your money, but depend upon God. And I believe that God, you know, don't, don't let God try to humble you by using the process of elimination. God can take some things away to where, to where all you have, <clears throat> God can take some things away to where all you have is the promises in the word of God. So, not only are we to humble ourselves, but we're to pray and we are to seek the face of God. We are to humble ourselves and pray and seek the face of God. During this pandemic, while we are in our houses and while we are practicing social distancing, it behooves us to pray which means to commune and talk to God and allow God to talk to us. It, it behooves us to humble ourselves. I know we think that we're wonderful. I'm talking about the Christians I, and, and some of our leaders. I know we think that we got it going on, but it behooves us, if we want to fix this economy, that God can choose to mess up if he, uh, uh, if he pleases. It behooves us to humble ourselves. Uh, and I think about the song, the old song that the saints used to sing, Referring to humility, Lord, if you move, I'll fall because I'm leaning on you. Humility is total and whole dependence upon God. And we ought to pray. And like I said, call your families and pray. This is not, you know, this is not a drill, but the crisis that we're in is the real thing. We're to humble ourselves and pray. And also we are to seek the face of God. We are to seek Christians during the time that we are in our houses and during the time of this social distancing. We are to seek Christians. We are to seek the face of Almighty God. What is God's, what is the countenance on God's face concerning the church of Jesus Christ? Is God happy? Is, is God frustrated? Is, is God disturbed? Is God fed up? In the, while we're in our houses and while these churches are set down or shut down because some of us have been irreverent and notice that that when people were irreverent in the house of God, Jesus beat them out of the temple. So what if it's God that's driving us out of our temples until we can show reverence and driving us into our homes so we can pr practice being hum humil uh, humility rather in praying and talking to God, getting back to the basics. So we are to humble ourselves and pray and seek the face of God. Seek the face of God. How, how does God feel concerning the church of Jesus Christ? Is he angry? Is he disappointed? Is he tired? Seek his face, and then, Christians, turn from your wicked ways. God is calling us while we're in our houses, before we even get to the place where we're out sharing the gospel. God is calling the Christians while we're in our houses to humble ourselves, pray, and to turn from our wicked or our evil ways. What is it that God is calling us Christians to turn from? Turn from our wicked ways, and then God says, then God says, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive the sin, and I will heal the land. In other words, God said, I'll open up heaven, and I'll return, I'll, get, I'll, I'll pour rain, I'll heal the land, or I will heal the economy but the healing of the economy, the weight is on the church of Jesus Christ to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek the countenance of God and to turn from our wicked ways. This is how we heal the economy. All this time we thought the weight was on the government. All this time we thought the weight was on the president. But, but, but the Bible says, or God Almighty says, when I choose to mess up the economy, the weight is on the church of Jesus Christ. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ in the face of this pandemic to rise, people of God. It's time for us to rise. It's time for us to lay hold of what we say we believe. It's time for us to live out our faith. It's time for us to get back into our houses and to
to pull our families together and to pray and talk to God, seek his face. And, 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 and the only way that we can rise is to start with prayer. God, is, God has it all set up now. He, he, didn't, he didn't pull some things out of our lives. He's shut some things down. Now we're in the position to glean the word of God. Now we're in the position to spend more time with our families. Now we're in the position to actually talk on the telephone. Y'all remember we were so busy, we couldn't even take phone calls. You better text me. Don't you FaceTime me. You better, I'm too busy. Now God has set it up where we have time to call our family members and to see how they're doing and to actually hold a conversation. God is calling us to go back to the foundation of our faith, to seek his face, to humble ourselves, and to pray, and to turn from our wicked ways. And it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to rise in the face of financial setback, to rise in the face of persecution, to rise in the face of sickness, to rise in the face of death. It's time, Christians, for the church of Jesus Christ to rise. The weight is not on the government, the weight is not on the president, but according to 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 and verse 14, the weight is on the church of Jesus Christ. This is a time for us to rise. We are the salt of the earth. We keep the earth from corrupting, and salt that has lost its saltiness, Jesus says, is no good. We are to be the light of the world. The world should be looking us for direction looking to us, rather, for direction. And God is calling us while we're inside and while we're on shutdown. God is calling us to do 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 13. And then when we return to our churches, and, and some have been irreverent to the house of God, even by not going to church, you show your reverence. And, and we talked about that parable in Luke chapter 14. The parable represented the kingdom of God. And some people, you know, you might say, well, I wasn't, I wasn't in church clowning. I, didn't even, I wasn't even going to church. So those who are in church, being irreverent, they're guilty. And, and, and you who chose not to go to church when you could have went, you were showing irreverence for uh, the kingdom of God and for God himself. Notice in the parable that the master of the house, the master of the great banquet, he was angry because people made excuses for why they couldn't come. Now that we're shut down, God is trying to get us back to the place that we reverence the house of God. There, there's, you know, I don't know how long it's going to be before this pass over, but I believe that God is working his purpose, and I believe we will reach the place where we, where we say that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. Of the Lord. Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for allowing your word to get out despite technical difficulties, oh God. I, 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 I just thank you that, that you are more than able to get your word out for your people. I thank you, Lord, for the example or the model of the early church, and you're calling us to follow that model, but and you're calling us to rise to the occasion. But we realize, oh God, that in order to rise, it starts on our knees. It starts with us praying and seeking your face and humbling ourselves. And then, oh God, then you will forgive our sins and you will heal the land or repair the economy. In Jesus' name, Father, we praise you and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Facebook. Once again, we, we apologize for all the technical difficulties uh, and those who are listening or will be listening from uh, the television broadcast uh, produced by our dear sister Gail Miller. We thank God for her. Uh, you all will probably see this uh, a week from today. Uh, so this concludes our message. We finally got it out, despite all that, that was going on here in the studio. Uh, we finally got the message out, uh, and it behooves us Christians to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to our churches. God bless you, people of God. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally, supernatural. A demon 
known as the spirit of death, is behind all premature death in believers. It is usually something tragic in nature and includes fatal accidents, unexplained sickness, suicide, and even murder. When you defeat this demon, then you will be more than a conqueror in every area of your life. Want to know how to conquer it? Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Now, some of you, this is a new area. Others understand, but I'm telling you, this is life-saving, essential, end-time information. Uh, Becky Dvorak, define the demon of death. The spirit of death, it's a demon, and it's a deadly demon, and it's out to steal, to kill, and to destroy us in every way possible. Uh, give me some examples to identify this. Um, a spirit of death would, would come after someone in the area of, of, of incurable, rare diseases, or someone has reoccurring sickness and disease in their bodies that they just can't seem to get free of. Um, they have thoughts of suicide, or they have murderous, terroristic thoughts against other people, including abortion. And sometimes people are so bound by a spirit of fear. That's what a spirit of, of death does to people, and you know that it's attacking you. Uh, how does this get into people? The spirit of death, it's, it's, real, it, it's real sly, it's real cunning, and it's looking for a weakness. It's looking for an entrance into your life. And so if you're weak in faith in a certain area, it'll come after you in that manner. Negative emotions are definite open doors to the spirit of death to come in. What's the first thing when we, we recognize there's something going on and it isn't just normal? What do we do? Well, we need to take our authority over it and renounce it, cut it off from us in the name of Jesus. How do you do that? Well, an example is to lay your hand on your body and say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce this spirit of death. I command it out of my body, and I release the spirit of life into it in the name of Jesus. I have many people that teach based on studying the Bible. Becky teaches based on firsthand experience, but unfortunately, she didn't have anyone teaching her these things. Uh, you, you were on the mission field, and you get hit with the worst kind of typhoid that it's possible. Tell me about that. And you don't do nothing. You, you didn't know even how to fight it. You're right. I didn't know how to fight it. And with typhoid, it, it's something that reoccurs in your body, and it's high fevers, and it's very painful, and it just totally drains you. It wears you out. And this time it was level four, which was the worst. And I didn't know what I know today. I didn't know to come against it. I didn't know those things. And I remember just laying in my bed in our bedroom, and I and, and I just reached a point where I just didn't want to fight anymore. And I just said, God, take me home. God, take and me when, home. as soon as I said those words, take me home, God, I heard the Lord speak to me and in the form of a rebuke. Hmm. And he said, get, get up. up, get out get of bed, bed and get dressed. get dressed. And you know what? It's what I needed to hear, Sid. And I heard the Lord say again, but not, not in the form of a rebuke, but in, in the form of an encouragement, like, you can do it. And he said, get, get up, up. Get, get out of bed, bed and get, get dressed. dressed. And, and uh, it was very ungraceful, very unladylike, I'm telling you, but I just slid out of the bed onto a lump on the floor. <laughs> and, and I crawled. It took everything within me, but I crawled to that dresser and I got myself dressed. It took a long time, but I got myself dressed. And then I crawled to the door, and I had to try and reach and open up that door, but I got it open. And then I had to 
pull myself up in the doorway, and, and but I got myself up, and I was, and I was leaning it against this wall, this hallway, and and with every step, I'm telling you, I felt strength return to my body, and from that moment on, I never ever had another bout with typhoid. I never had one symptom of it in my body. You know, you know, Becky. Never give up. Amen. Never give up. Never. Never give up. Amen. Now, what Becky loves to do, she knows how to do it the hard way. <laughs> she doesn't wish that on anyone. No, I don't. Her heart's desire is to train you. Tell me about the parents of the three-year-old girl that you trained. Yes, I receive prayer requests all the time from people, and I try to answer them the best I can. And there was a couple in the United States, and the man's name is Victor, and they have a three-year-old little girl. And the little girl was suffering for seven months already with epileptic seizures. And, and they were just very bad seizures and no medication, nothing was working for her. And he cried out to, in desperation and he asked me to pray for him. So I prayed for him, this is online, and I prayed for him. And then I, I gave him direction. Now I need you to renounce the spirit of death and release the spirit of life. And part of what I, what I taught him to do is what I teach people when it comes to epileptic seizures, which can be very deadly. Um, I told him, in the name of Jesus, you go in with your words and prophesy over that brain. And in Jesus' name, we supernaturally erase every pathway that those seizures are following. And we declare the word of the Lord, and it may not redig any more pathways for these seizures to follow, because in Jesus' name, that that spirit of death, that premature death, that epileptic spirit is gone in her in Jesus' name. And so I told I'll tell him, you what, just as you're saying that, I feel like something good <laughs> is going on. Amen, amen. The word never returns void, amen. And so I told him, just start speaking this, no matter what it looks like. I don't care how many seizures she has in front of you. You just keep quoting it out loud. And seven days later, he wrote me and he said, I have a testimony to share with you. And it happened right away, but I waited for a full week before I contacted you again. She has never had one more seizure. It's gone. You know, Amen. This woman Amen. has been taught, personally taught by God to teach others. And, uh, and I think it's so wonderful. You've written the prayers out for different types of uh, diseases. Uh, there are people watching us, I believe, even in a hospital room and other places right at this moment. And they're battling the same thing you're talking about in a spirit of death. Uh, would you look at them and give them advice? Be their coach right now. Well, right now in Jesus' name, I say never give up, no matter how bad that situation looks, no matter how bad the medical report is, you never give up. You have to learn how to choose to live, choose to fight, and choose to win. And so you lay your hand on yourself right now, and you renounce that spirit of death, you renounce that sickness, and you command it out of your body in the name of Jesus, and then you release the spirit of life. And and the healing power of the Holy Spirit to flow into your body. But first of all, you cannot give up. You have to choose to, to live, and you have to choose to fight. Well, I, I have been reading the reports of people that sit under your teaching. Let me ask you this. Uh, you're, you're, you're driving, I guess, towards Guatemala, and um, there was a crazy man driving a truck. Tell me about that story. Yes, this happened many years ago in our early years of living in Guatemala, and we were driving through Mexico on our way to Guatemala. And we were on this trucker's route. It's on the, it's by the Gulf of Mexico, and, and they're really crazy drivers at that point. And anyway, it's all hill country, and it was clear for me to, to make this pass. And so I, I'm, I'm going along, 
and all of a sudden this man in this semi truck looks down and I think because he saw I was a woman driving this car and at that time it wasn't very common there and and he saw me and he started to laugh at me he, he stepped on the pedal so he went faster and faster and and I'm telling you and you're trying to I'm trying to pass and, and he's going faster mm -hmm. than you and up in the distance I see over on top of the other hill another semi truck coming over the hill and and the guy can see it coming and he's laughing away at me and I'm going as fast as I can and there's nothing I can do in the natural there's no way of escape this man I just have to say just had the spirit of death over him and just this murderous type of of spirit came over him and this semi coming over the hill, it's coming down, and it's and that semi is picking up speed. And I didn't know anything that I know today. I just knew I had a God that loved me and cared for me, and this was not of God. This was purely of Satan. That's all I knew at that point in life. And this semi is coming, and it's coming, and, and it, it's, it's sounding its horn. And all I know, Sid, is I saw the brightest, whitest, glorious light, and it was just a big flash of light. And the next thing I knew, we were far ahead of this man, and, and as if nothing had ever happened. And, and there was no explanation for it other than what I read in the Bible about being translated. What actually happens, do you know this? Do you know what actually happens when you die? Becky died, and she's going to explain what happens. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. Our world doesn't need another Christian TV network. What the world needs is life-changing programs that have a tangible outpouring of God's presence, and people need to be able to access it whenever they need it, wherever they are. ISN makes it possible to meet you right at your point of need with live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on mobile devices or smart TVs. Or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural and other exclusive programs in our online library. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Whenever, wherever, God's not limited, and neither is your access to the supernatural of God. Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision, but Scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered Scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. One New Humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how One New Humanity is critical to bringing multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. A powerful Jewish media executive tries unsuccessfully to fill the void in his life with money, fame, and influence. He has flown wherever he wants to go on a private jet and produces a nationally syndicated radio show but his existence feels empty and unsatisfying. Then he discovers a revelation that totally changes his life. Do you want to learn what this revelation was? Have you ever wondered if there's more to life? For the ending to this true story, go to www.thethoughtforthemselves.com. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know something? If you can conquer that spirit of death, everything else is almost easy. 
and the method is the same. That's what's so important about this teaching. But this spirit of death keeps trying to come on, Becky. Uh, tell me about the time you actually died. Yes, I did. I remember I was in Guatemala. And one thing I want to express here, ask God, why is the spirit of death coming after us? What is going on in this situation? And he'll tell you, and it will reveal great things. And the enemy is just plain afraid of us. He's afraid of us. So he wants to take us out so we don't fulfill our destiny. But here is what happens when you die. And, and you know, oftentimes, and we talked about this before, about having a fear of death and people being afraid because they don't know what's going on. And I'm talking about God's people, but I'm telling you, Jesus took the sting out of death for the believer. And as this was happening, as my spirit was lifting out of my body, I'm laying in my bed, breathing in those last breaths. And so you're lifting out. And as soon as I lifted out of that body, the next thing I knew, I was standing in this glorious light next to the side of the bed. And the Lord just allowed me to just worship him. And I just worshiped and worshiped and worshiped. And then all of a sudden, I looked over here and Jesus was sitting up above the bed and you know halfway in the wall and the next thing I knew I was sitting next to him halfway in the wall and you can see through the walls you can hear everything that's going on around you I could see my husband in the next room the bathroom and he was crying out to God he was crying out to God for my life and all of a sudden I looked at Jesus and he's looking at me like this. And I looked at him and I said, wait a minute, it's not my time to go. And I said, but who's gonna call me back in my body? And he said, you are. And I said, okay. And, and it was like, God, Jesus was, was training me. <laughs> He's saying, and I'm saying, okay, in the name of Jesus, I command my spirit back into my body in the name of Jesus. And the next thing I knew, it was morning. And it was very strange when I woke up because I knew Sid, and it's going to make me cry, I could have been with Jesus for eternity at that moment. I could have. But I knew he that he wanted me to choose to live on this earth and to fulfill my destiny, which I hadn't even begun to fulfill. Tell me about the witch doctor They wanted to kill you. Oh, the witch doctor, yes. You know, you know sometimes we fear the devil um, and, 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 and because we forget that greater is Jesus in us than he who is in the world, amen? And here I was ministering for a full week in northern Tanzania with the Maasai tribe. I used to go there a couple times a year and I would minister and minister and minister out in the bush in the Serengeti Plains. I, w I walked up to the platform and it was now time for me to, to preach and I was teaching them about the redemptive blood of Jesus. And it was amazing, you know, and, and, then, and then all these people came forward for him healing and so and they want you to lay hands on them that's what they expect that's what they walk all these miles and days for and so here I was and I, I remember laying my hands on the first woman and she went under the power healed in the name of Jesus and I went to go lay my hand on the next woman standing next to her but on the corner of my eye I saw this man and he had this cane kind of stick you know that they carry with them and and and, and I'm noticing that you know that he's you know, very close to me. And I'm about to lay my hand on this woman, so you know, it's happening very fast. And all of a sudden, he accidentally bumps into me. And as soon as he bumped into me, so lightly bumped into me, that man went flying backwards through the air. The people out there actually parted as he went flying through the air backwards on the ground dead. And I said, Jesus, help me. Somebody just died in the healing line. And I went running to the man. I was so, I was so surprised by the whole thing. And I went running to the man. And I got down to him. And I, when I reached down and touched him, 
He felt like he had been dead for a long time. His body was cold and stiff like it had been dead for a very long time. And I said, in Jesus' name, I renounce the spirit of death. In Jesus' name, I command you to come back to life. And nothing happened. And I'm like going, oh, Lord, this is a, this is a healing evangelist. Worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like going, a man actually died in the healing line. Help me, Lord. <laughs> and, and so I'm, and, and so I, I you know, I, I was a little confused at what was going on. Why, you know? And, and so I, I laid my hand on him again, and I said, you breathe now in Jesus' name. And I said it three times. You breathe, breathe, breathe in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and he took this big gasp of breath. <gasps> hmm. And then he started to roll around and, and foam at the mouth and all this demonic activity started coming out of the man. And, and I'm, you know, I'm starting to stand up looking at this and a woman out there had come to visit her people and, and, and she said here, she goes, don't you know who he is? And I said, I don't, I, I don't know who he is. Who is he? She goes, he's the witch doctor. And I was like, oh, oh, I get it. And, and that morning, I had prayed very differently before going out and ministering to the people all day. I had, as, as we were praying in the spirit, as we were praying in tongues that, that morning, I prayed something I had never prayed before, but I've prayed it ever since. I said, and may every curse and assignment that they try to put on us today, may it bounce back on them and teach them a lesson in Jesus' name. Well... <laughs> That was a literal bounce back. <laughs> the guy goes to touch her to put a curse on her, and he falls out dead. <laughs> Would you pray right now against the spirit of death, the demon of death? Amen. Because I know the authority you are, carry. Okay, let's hold hands. In the name of Jesus, right now, I renounce that spirit of death coming against you in the name of Jesus. I declare no weapon formed against you will prosper. This disease, this sickness in Jesus' name, you leave their body. That spirit of suicide, you leave their body. That desire to, to abort your child, I command that spirit of death to come off of you in the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No evil will come near your dwelling. And those lying spirits will be silenced in the name of Jesus. That spirit of death, you come off of these people right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But then, the next day, she goes to visit the witch doctor. What happened? Yes, I went to go visit him the next day with the help of the interpreters, and I wanted to give him the opportunity to get born again if he was willing. And, and I walked into his hut, and, and I said, Hi, I'm Becky. Do you remember me? And he went like this because he didn't want to look at me. And he was afraid to look at me, and, and he was, you know, and he felt embarrassed about everything that happened because he realized that he was operating in the lesser power than what we operate in Jesus. Amen? And so I gave him the opportunity to get born again, and he says, I can't do what you're asking me to do. And I said, why can't you? He said, the other witch doctors, which are higher than he is, they already came to visit me, and they threatened me if I give my life to Jesus. And, and, and I tried to, to minister to him, and, and, and he said, I can't. They've come, and they have threatened my life. I cannot do this. And I said, okay, I'm telling you how to get born again. I'm just telling you, and this is what you do. And so I told him, and, and we were walking out of the hut, and outside of his hut were standing several of his wives, because out there they have multiple wives, and many children and grandchildren and all of that. And they were standing outside of the hut, and, and he walked me out to the doorway, so he saw everything and heard everything that was going on. And they said, we don't want what you have. We don't want your inheritance. We want this Jesus that she's talking about. You literally saw the contest between evil and God, mm -hmm. and it's a no contest. We win. The supernatural knows no bounds. And now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. 
ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISN podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hi. I'm Dr. Francis Miles. I have been given a powerful revelation from God that will teach you how to enter the realm of breakthrough prayer and kingdom authority. Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth and learn how to demolish the enemy's plots and step into the fullness of your kingdom destiny. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide.